Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Lovely. Well, those are the bigger me sisters, and they'll be back again later on in the programme. So hold on to your wallets. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, 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 very special occasion here on Rutland Weekend Television because, as you may have noticed from the Radio Times, it's Christmas. And we're all here in the Rutland Room celebrating it live in front of a specially uninvited audience. And we're privileged to have with us tonight the Alberto Rewrite Five. Led by their tasteless and talentless leader, Alberto Rewrite. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen and audience, is a very, very, very special occasion here on Rutland Weekend Television because we are very privileged to have with us a star of immense magnitude, a man who's been on much bigger television stations than this one, but we hope none more warmer nor more sincere. The man, none other than the incomparable Mr George Addison, and he'll be here later on on the programme singing some of his bigots, my sweet civil lord, etc., etc. But first of all, hey, the dead. Uh, 30 pieces of uh, parrot. Good evening. Uh, hi, Long John. Uh, yes, Boston yes, yes, very Boston. nice, very nice. Uh, uh, yes, you'll be able to sing in a minute, thank you. A sing? Yes, in a minute, ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable lennox of the quiet one from the Fab Four will be here to sing you some of his best uh, I'm not here to sing, I'm here to act. Act? Yes. Here? Yes, a hard in line on the dead man's chest. The pirate sketch. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. There's, uh, there's no pirate sketch down on the running order, I'm afraid. No pirate sketch down here, see? Uh, no pirate sketch? No. Uh, I'll help you, then. Uh, yes, but you can sing, you know. Oh, 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 We've done this, thank you. Uh, no second verse required, please. Evacuate the Are you going to be much younger? What? Why don't I lock up the hall? 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 Why don't I lock up the Christmas weekend on Rutland Weekend Television starts tonight with the traditional hospital Christmas show. This year, Christmas Night with the Scars comes from St. Solly's Hospital Pinner, where many famous television stars will be going to have a look at some sick people. It's an unfortunate time of the year to spend in bed all day on drugs, and so a lot of the stars will be getting up and going to the hospitals. What they get up to when they get there, you can see on Christmas Night with the Scars. The morning after starts with racing from Belfast. And who can blame people racing from Belfast? After which we go over to the Vatican, where the Pope this year will be appealing for peace on the Manchester United terraces. As usual this Christmas, many famous stars of Westminster return to your screen for another party political panto. This year on behalf of the Liberal Party. Following Edward Heath's triumph last year as Widow Twanky in A Lad in a Lot of Trouble, this year's dame is Margaret Thatcher, and she appears as the lovable Mother Goose, opposite Cyril Smith as the goose that lays the golden ego. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome, please, the Alberto Rewrite Five. Hello, testing. One, two. Testing. One, two. How do you do? Testing. One, two. It's one. The fool to be here. Testing. One, two. Testing. One, two. It's the black spot and 13 men on a dead man's chest. Yes, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you, yes. Thank you. yes. Thank you. yes. Lovely, 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 lovely. lovely. Shovel, thank you, thank you, yes, in a minute. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in a minute, the evergreen vocal cords of Mr George Addison. But right now on Rutland Weekend, it's time for another episode in our ever-popular series, How to Ski in Your Own Home. No. Hello. 
This week we are going to try something easier than last week when we taught you how to ski in your own bathroom. Yeah, unfortunately Heidi came in to take a shower just as we were demonstrating a pole turn, which emphasizes a key point in skiing. Always lock the bathroom door. So, you see, this week we are completely plastered and we're going to teach you how to sit in the lounge in a comfortable chair. But first, we are going to show you how to ski in the kitchen. Yeah, if you can just get some bloody skis short at the end door. Those these big bloody skis, they are so troublesome for cutting about the house. Oh, bloody skis. When we have shown you how to ski in every room of your own home, you will be able to go to Switzerland and ski in a Swiss person's home. Incidentally, Mr. Reginald from Isha writes asking... Why is there no snow? Well, Mr. Reginald, there is no snow in our house because we're not bloody Eskimos. Yeah, we have Exminster, Wilton, Linoleum, Tires and Bucky Flooring, and each of these services we have showed you how to ski on. If you have snow in your home in Isha, Mr. Reginald, you must be some kind of cuckoo nut. Right. If we can just get the skis from the bloody tender, we will go into the kitchen for the lesson. Oh, dear. Poor Robin is still demonstrating how to hang glide in the kitchen. He's been hanging there for some time, since Tuesday, I think. Yeah, I think maybe he has hang glided himself. So whilst we check... It's bloody damn skis. So whilst we check, we will go over the hands at the start of the slalom. Well, there you can see number 47, Hans Ubelmeyer from Rotwürstestadt, adjusting himself and waiting for the clock. And there's the slalom course from the nursery slopes to the front door and out into the front garden. And there's the bell. And that's a new world record indoor and outdoor time for two broken limbs, a collarbone and a fractured rib cage. Oh dear, poor Hans. Well, next week we will be coming from St. Thomas's Hospital where we are going to teach you how to ski in your own ward. So, until next week, just avoid hang gliding. Bye bye. bye. Look, will you speak to him about this pirate sketch? Well, I would, but I don't have any pull around here, you know. Well, what if you were to write a pirate sketch? Well, maybe next year, but if I were to do it now, you know, I'd get the elbow, that's for sure. Don't you want to play a pirate? Well, it's not that, but... Oh, look out. What? It's a Christmas play. Oh, no. Nil. Wolverhampton Wanderers. Nil. Coventry City. Nil. Manchester United. Nil. Derby County. Nil. Birmingham City, nil. Leicester, nil. Stoke City, nil. Bloody Leeds, Christmas. Nil. Newcastle United, nil. Liverpool, I nil. I hate Christmas. Shh, Frank. Nil. Not in front of Ricky. What do you mean, nil. not in front of Ricky? Well, he's too young nil. to hear things like Leeds that. Two. Too young? He's over Leeds 40. City, and you gave him some more Leeds toys Leeds. this year. Well. Nil. He likes toys. Nil. It's Joel. time that boy grew up. Nil. By the time I was 40, I was in the big school. Nil. Bloody Christmas. Bolton. We'd Nil. enjoy ourselves more Bolton. if we didn't have to enjoy Nil. ourselves. Bromwich, He's a bundle of joy Nil. over the festive period, isn't he? Nottingham. I'm not sure Nil. whether I watch television because I'm not enjoying myself Nil. or I'm not enjoying myself Bolton. because I watch television. Nil. Well, turn the bloody Bolton. thing off. Nil. Blackburn Rovers, 29. Well, now... How about a nice game of suicide? How do you play suicide? Well, each competitor has to commit suicide, then you don't have to sit through another Christmas. So not Christmas, Frank. You know, when I was a boy, my mother used to take me to Lewis's, Manchester, to see Father Christmas. There was this wonderful old grotto with fairy lights and lots of little gnomes, and you'd walk along this snow-carpeted corridor, and there in this beautiful light was this old man with a white beard and a red coat... And I climbed up on his knee, and I sat on his lap, and I punched him right on the nose. You should have heard the old bastard swear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, it's all go. Present for you, Gav. Oh, smash it. Special delivery sign there. Thank you. 
Where's the present then? This is the present. What, this? Yeah. For me? Yeah. How nice. That's the nicest present I've ever had. What's that, Stan? Uh, it's uh, a present for me. What, uh? Yes, uh, this is my present. What a nice present. Yes, isn't it lovely? What are you going to do with it? I don't know, but I've got a few ideas. Stanley! <laughs> what does it say? Uh, to Stan, happy Christmas from guess who? P.S. Enjoy yourself. You're not having it, Stan. Would you like to play with my present, Frank? I'm not having it in the house. I think I'll just take my present into the other room and have a little play with it. They make lovely presents, women, don't they? Oh, yes, lovely. I think they make the nicest presents. They do, women. They make the nicest presents. Hey, Frank, I never gave you a present this Christmas, did I? No. Oh, I'd like you to have this. Stand up, Vera. Oh, I couldn't possibly. No, please, Frank. As a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to accept Vera as a Christmas present. Oh, it's really too much. No, it's not, no. No, she's, uh, she may be second hand, but she's got great sentimental value. And I've got this new one now, and it's greedy to have two. Oh, I'm overwhelmed, Stan. No, I'd like you to have this as well. Ah, Shut up. Ow. I'd like you to have this as well. You can't have too many presents. Oh, you really are too kind, Stan. Well, <laughs> oh. Mr. Paul? Yes? We're a Christmas present for you. For me? Yeah. How nice. Come in, lads. Who are you from? We're from him. Frank, how very kind of you. What a lovely surprise. Not at all. You deserve them. What's that, dear? Frank's given me a band for Christmas. Oh, well, we'd better hear them play. All right, I'll have a little play with me band. Here, what about me, then? Don't worry, I'll have a little play with you later. believe in Santa anymore He's never answered anything I've written Him and all his have you been a good boy To me he's just a silly fat old git Now I don't believe in Santa anymore my trust in him was all a big mistake Whoever saw him climbing down a chimney And as for red-nosed reindeer, what a fake Each Christmas Eve I'd lie in bed and stay awake Just to catch a glimpse of his white beard I suppose it's just coincidence that I was fast asleep Whenever he appeared Now I don't believe in Santa anymore With all his jingle bells and yo-ho-ho Scaring kids and ripping off their grannies He's just a bloke in some grotty grotto Now my credulence in Santa has run out From now on he's just a monumental bore Since I've found another way to have a stocking filled I don't believe in Santa and it That's my present. Lay off. Come on, darling. Who said you could play with her? Hello. I expect, like me, you've all had rather a lot to eat and drink this Christmas. I expect you had some sherry, and maybe some beer, and then perhaps rather a lot of wine with your turkey, and all the vegetables, and stuffing, and cranberry sauce, followed by a Christmas pudding with rum in it, and, and, and mince pies with cream, and uh, and lots of sticky sweets. Excuse me. Ha ha! I didn't lie on an edgeman's chest. Ha ha! 
Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, in a minute, lad. Uh, oh, now, ladies and gentlemen, in a minute, please, in a minute. Our entertainment tonight continues in a minute. Continues with a special edition of Rutland Film Night. Hello. Well, we're spending most of tonight looking back at some of the films of 1975. I shall be looking at Pommy, the latest rock opera film, and I shall be looking at The Autocue. I shall also be looking at the Linda Lovelace retrospective at the NFT and the Mirror. But first of all, let's have a look at a scratchy old bit of film that won an award for being most scratchy bit of old film shown on film night by a major film critic. The major film critic was me, and this is the bit of film. Mm. Well, that film took second place in chips at the Cannes Fish Festival, just behind Jaws, which also captured Best Dressed Crab Award and Best Male Supporting Whale. Also at the Cannes Fish Festival, Pommy won Best Rock Cod Opera. I haven't and... finished. Oh, sorry. Well, to Linda Lovelace and Deep Throat. It's pretty much a filmmaker's film in that it was obviously more fun to make than to watch. Personally, I prefer the sequel Sore Throat, which concerns a middle-aged lady, Linda Lovelace, who is born without a brain in her head. Eventually, and surprisingly, her gynaecologist finds it, and we spend the rest of the film watching her think. The film ends happily, and fortunately, after only 20 minutes. Your turn. Thank you, Phil. Pommy, he'll tear your ears apart, looks set to being a big box office hit. It's already won an Oscar for loudest film, and it's made in a new process called catatonic sound, which can kill you if you don't buy the more expensive seats. Filmed in Australia, the action takes place in Ann Sydney. An English immigrant, Pommy, who has been orphaned when a white symbolic disc falls on his mother and father during a celebration of high mass at a football stadium near Woi Woi, takes the afternoon off to visit his local cinema down under. He becomes deaf, dumb and blind while watching a Ken Russell movie. And the film concerns his struggle to get out of the cinema. Earlier on this year, I spoke to Anne Melbourne, one of the stars of the film. But first, let's have a look at an extract where Pommy, played by Roger Dull, realises he can't stand it anymore. A fool, so I don't go to school. I just hang around and play the cool. Snapping my fingers, looking for fun. I'm a concrete jungle boy. Wearing my shirt with the buttons undone. I'm a concrete jungle boy. The music is loud and I like it a lot I got what it takes so I take what it's got I'm 
best But I'm just a big girl I couldn't care less All that I am is standing right here Between my legs and between my ears Concrete jungle boy Concrete jungle boy Concrete jungle boy You're nobody's mother's pride and joy Concrete jungle boy Concrete jungle boy Concrete jungle boy You're nobody's mother's pride and joy I'd like to begin, if I might, uh, by asking you about the film Pommy, in which uh, you play a tin of baked beans. Yes, that's right. How do you get into a role like this? Well, the problem is really how to get out, but I've got my agent working on it. I understand that in the original, you were going to play Pommy's mother. Yes, that's right, but she was rewritten as a tin of baked beans. And you spend most of the film trying to get out? No. I spent most of the filming trying to get out. I understand that you are naked in part of the film. Yes. Does this worry you at all? No, no. I will only take my clothes off on film if it is artistically viable and if the money is right. Will you take them off? What? Now? What? Nothing, nothing. Anne Melbourne there on the set of her latest film, Googie Withers. Well, we've still got a few minutes left, now he's finally finished, for me to round up quickly the rest of the year's films. Cowering Inferno is a disaster movie and also a disastrous movie. Set in a two-storey motel near Rutland, it tells the story of how, whilst 15 Rotarians are upstairs at a function, Fire Chief Sid Wattle and County Councillor Cyril Rist combat a blaze in one of the downstairs sunny bins, before eventually being forced to call the AA. Godfather 12? I hadn't finished. Oh, sorry. Godfather 12 You're is... always like this. You've been on screen much more than me, far more this week. I'm sorry. Godfather 12 has been retitled for this country and reaches us as Son of Godfather. And the latest the... Otto Preminger movie is Sexodus. The film concerns the sexual liberation of the Jewish people who are led into bondage by some naughty Egyptians. Right. Paws tells the story of a puppy which terrorises naked swimmers on ladies' night at the Finchley Slipper Baths. The novel was one this of This year's the... royal film is Charlie's Aunt and it's the life story of Princess Margaret. Charlie is played by John Lennon, one of the most exciting... Another disaster movie is Birthquake, where nobody's allowed in during the last stage of labour. Ices and epidurals are available from the tray. Last I... Mango in Paris is directed by Berto Lettice, and it's one of my favourite movies. Murder on the Oakham Express is... Right, this is the last time I have you on my show. Your show? Who gets all the ratings? All the sailors, more like. Oh, you bitch. Always in my clothes. Right. Side. You just didn't... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Christmas would not be Christmas without Her Majesty the Queen of Rutland. The and Lord go away! And this year is no exception, so will you welcome, please, Her Majesty the Queen of Rutland. I'm sorry, love, you know, I mean, we have to get on... Hello. Oh, I'm not the Queen, incidentally. I'm simply introducing the programme. Well, this year, as every year, has been an extremely busy year in the life of Her Majesty the Queen of Rutland, 
And so, instead of the traditional Christmas broadcast, we thought it would be a good idea, well, it was my idea, actually, if we made a film show of some of the activities of Her Majesty during the year. Rutland, as you know, is the only part of the British Isles to have a queen of its own, and this is the film of her year. The Right Royal Rutland Year opened in January, when Her Majesty visited the new student campus at Rutland University. Queen and her entourage saw many aspects of the student's life. And Her Majesty celebrated her visit by planting a tree to inaugurate the new car park. March means FA Cup time in Rutland, and this year was no exception as Her Majesty watched the local finalists thrash it out in an exciting goalless draw. April saw Her Majesty visit Jowls, a film about a president who terrorised the inhabitants of America and which was this year's Royal Rutland film. The crowds were out at the Rutland Coliseum for all the glamour and splendour of a Royal film performance. May means FA Cup replay time in Rutland, and this year was no exception as Her Majesty watched them thrash out another exciting goalless draw. April saw Her Majesty opening the new Rutland Weekend Television Centre. Designed by master architect Cyril Twang, winner of the Queen's Kosher Butchers Award to Industry. July means replay of the FA Cup replay time in Rutland, and this year was no exception as the 348 minutes of goalless football was ended with a hotly disputed foul. Foul! Oh, whiff! September saw the climax of Her Majesty's year with the opening of Rutland's own oil, which will free Rutland from slavish dependence on Scottish Arabs. Yes, a truly royal Rutland year. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, Mr. George Addison sings. Life for me. All my friends are pirates and the same the BBC. I got a jolly Roger, it's a black and white and fast. So get out of your skull and crossbones and I run it off your mask. With the old ho ho and ha 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 Get out of your skull and crossbow I run it up your mask All together I like to be a pirate A pirate's life for me And all my friends are pirates And they the BBC Got a jolly roger in Crossbow, put it up your man. I want to 
it up, your man.